So today we're going to switch it up and we're going to talk about the daunting task of taking on the new developer hard mode. And personally, I've started a hard mode and I've collected some data that I think will help people in the beginning parts of the game, but I also believe that if these principles are followed, I think it can help in the mid and late parts of the game as well. And I'm going to go through my data and my findings and we'll talk about those a little bit later. But first, for the overview, we're going to talk about my thoughts before playing hard mode versus after starting the campaign. And then we're going to talk about the planning and management of the most important resource, which is money that corresponds to fuel. And that's where we're going to concentrate for this video. And then after that, I'm going to give you guys some small tips to help jumpstart your hard mode journey. And I think if those are followed, I think that you'll be able to have success in the later parts of the game. So before we start, I ask that you please help support the channel by liking the video and subscribing to the channel as well. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into this and check it out. To be honest, my thoughts on hard mode actually were pretty negative, and I probably was the biggest skeptic um, before starting this mode. Whenever I saw the concept of it or just saw some minor gameplay here and there, I just didn't like the concept of paying for fuel, repairs, or even just to make your vehicle look normal again and not like a molded piece of plastic. You had to pay a full price repair for that in the garage, and that just didn't look good for me, or just the general cost of deploying vehicles or just everything in the game costs money and that just didn't really appeal to me until I started watching some other streamers play it. Then I thought to myself, maybe I can make this work and have fun at it. So, you know, after playing the game twice through, I thought, I'll try my hand at hard mode. Let's see what we got. So, and that brings me to my thoughts on hard mode after starting my campaign. And I, I noticed that I, things that I didn't like, I actually found that I started to enjoy, which was paying for all those things. Um, it just made the game feel kind of new again. Um, I, but I still don't like the aspect of paying for the aesthetic repairs in the garage at full price. So hopefully that's something that they'll change in the future, but that's just wishful thinking. So, But I do really love the planning aspect, um, stringing, stringing missions together, and the overall difficulty. Everything feels more difficult in hard mode, and that's generally what it's supposed to feel like. But um, and lastly, it just makes everything feel new. You know, it brings back that old nostalgic feeling of whenever we first started our journeys in Michigan and everything was just felt new. So uh, that's just my thoughts on hard mode before and after playing, guys. So now we're going to jump and I'm going to talk about this planning and management of these resources. And I'm going to give you uh, the Michigan maps and I'm just going to show you how we can probably get you guys started on a good uh, jump start to kind of propel you through the uh, mid to late stages of the game. And I think these principles will really help. So let's jump into this one and let's take a look. So in SnowRunner, there are two resources that matter the most, money and fuel. And we all know that fuel costs money. And also at every pump, the price also is gonna vary from region to region, map to map. So this video is gonna show you how to try to get yourself ahead. And we're gonna use the Michigan maps as an example because I believe if you can start yourself out really good here in the opening maps of the game, I believe you'll have success and uh, it'll actually allow you to allocate more funds in different places to give you more financial freedom. And that kind of sounds weird, financial freedom, but it's gonna give you more financial freedom to do other things with your funds than just be locked down to use using your funds for just fuel. So here's Black River. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you guys the locations of uh, fuel that you can actually use um, for trailers and mission trailers and such like that. So here's Black River. The first mission, tra not mission trailer, but the first free trailer of fuel is right here. Here's the garage. Um, after you acquire your Fleet Star, I immediately went down here and grabbed this fuel trailer, brought it back, and that's what I used at the start of the game. The next trailer is actually going to be the heavy fuel tanker semi-trailer that sits right here by this um, fuel station. And this one actually has 5,000 liters of fuel or 1,321 gallons of fuel. And you can, because this is a mission trailer, you can deplete this to 10% of its value before you turn it in. I believe it goes up here. So that is quite a bit of fuel to siphon out. So right there you have a ton of fuel. And this fuel carrier trailer is uh, 2,000 liters or 529 gallons. So that's quite a bit of fuel to start the game with. And you can basically siphon this for a while and use these both um, to get you through most of Michigan. I know I did. Um, there's another one 
over here in this bog, this one's actually quite hard to get, especially in the opening parts of the game because you just don't have good tires to get back here. But I actually got this out of here early in the game with the Fleet Star um, using the winch to get across here. But this is also another fuel carrier trailer that's for a task. I think you bring it back here. What I did was I brought it back. I did not turn it in. I siphoned it down to 10%. Um, into other trucks or you know just used it until it was at 10% and then I turned it in and that's how I was able to kind of keep myself going there and then lastly um, there is a maintenance trailer right here that holds 529 gallons or 2,000 liters like these as well this goes to Smithfield Dam and what I did was I brought that out and took that to Smithville Dam. I used that as fuel as well to take me over there. So basically, I just used all this fuel and I transferred it over to Smithville Dam. We're going to jump over there right now because I'm going to, as you can see, there is no fuel on Smithville Dam at all. So the fuel that you get on Black River is going to actually propel you through this part of the map or this part of the region. And if you actually run out of fuel here, don't worry because Island Lake has a ton of fuel. So we're gonna jump to Island Lake now. And Island Lake has one fuel carrier semi-trailer, has three fuel carrier trailers, and three fuel uh, scout fuel trailers. So, you know, you have a scout fuel carrier here, you have a fuel carrier trailer here, you have the big one right here that has uh, 3,700 liters or 90, 979 gallons. And then you also have fuel carriers here. Uh, you have a scout fuel carrier here, a fuel carrier there, and they're all over the map. There's, you know, there's seven of them just on this map as well. So you're going to be able to take a lot of this fuel and use it back on Smithville if you need to. Um, personally, I didn't because I had so much fuel coming out of Black River. Um, I was very efficient with that. And we'll talk about efficiency later when I give you my tips. But this is a big place to grab fuel from. So if you ever need fuel, come over to, to Island Lake, grab some fuel, and bring it back. And then lastly, we're going to jump to Drummond Island. Because Drummond Island, although it is super small, um, there is a huge fuel carrier right here. And this one has 3,700 liters and also 979 gallons. And with, with that, you basically can complete everything on this region with just this fuel tanker here. But what I did was I basically brought all my fuel and spread them out um, in the maps because later on you're going to have to transfer things from map to map. And that's why I set up fuel carriers and trucks as well. But anyways, guys, to in total, Michigan gives you 27,000 100 liters of fuel or 7,167 gallons of fuel, which is quite generous. So, and then the gas that I carried over from Alaska after I completed this region 100%, I actually moved over 8,100 liters of fuel, and that transitions to 2,142 gallons of fuel that I actually took from Michigan and transferred to Alaska. Now, Alaska is kind of similar, there's a lot. There's a lot of fuel in Alaska as well to kind of like bank your stores even further. So basically, I'm going to give you kind of like a gist of how many trucks I brought over from Michigan. So I brought over four and a half trucks of fuel um, just to Alaska, and I have not even used any of them yet um, because of the free fuel in Alaska. I'm not going to go into Alaska right now because this is not like a map to map type of review, but um, I'm going to kind of like just go here and show you guys there is a ton of fuel on this map so don't be afraid to come over here and grab fuel but that is just that is just kind of like my overview these first two maps alaska and michigan they really have a ton of fuel for you to bank to kind of like propel you through the next maps because like the next maps tamir and even kola peninsula there's not a lot of free fuel to use so Use the fuel from mission trailers, free fuel, and just try to bank those up. So anyways, guys, we're going to go right now and look at our general overall tips. So we'll see you there. Okay, so for the final portion of the video, I'm going to talk about my overall final tips for my hardcore playthrough. These are just principles that I decided to stick to right before I started. I thought to myself, if I can stick to these things, um, I will be successful and has so far and I'm hoping that it will as I go through so if you can follow these principles I think you'll be able to propel, propel yourself through the mid and late parts of the game with these principles right here 
So let's start number one, mission trailers. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but you need to drain those down to 10% before you turn them in because if you drain them any farther, you cannot turn them in. So try to get those down to the 10% range and you can siphon the fuel from them and still turn them in. Um, the values are on your screen right now. So make sure you do that and that'll actually help you with free fuel as well. Next thing, siphon fuel from rescue missions. You'll have some tasks and maybe some contracts where you're pulling uh, vehicles to a location for rescue. Some of those vehicles do have fuel in them. And right before you turn them in, just siphon the fuel from them. Um, you can fully deplete them and then you can just drive and turn them in. Um, and so yeah, you have free fuel right there. And that leads me to my next point is free fuel. And we already talked about that. Any fuel that's not a mission or anything like that, that's free fuel. Definitely use it. It's going to help you. And then the, the next one is all-wheel drive. Um, this is something I've been switching off a lot. And I feel it, it does save a lot of fuel. So sometimes you really don't need all-wheel drive. And something I've been doing is just switching off all-wheel drive in low gear and just firing up my differential locking on my rear tires and that's saving me a lot of fuel so if you really don't need all-wheel drive switch it off because it uses more fuel so that's a good practice to do the next one is pretty important this is mission chaining this is just chaining miss missions together so if you're going to a side of the map um, do some homework and this is the planning aspect look on your tasks and even your contracts and if you're going somewhere try to do multiple missions at once don't just run there and do single missions because it's not really efficient because in hard mode uh, money is a resource and fuel costs money so try to string some missions together just to be more efficient and then this is something is pretty important as well is top off your fuel as much as possible before you head out anywhere because you don't know if you're going to get stuck or if you're going to have to pick up another task that you might have forgot um, in the meantime the next one, which I know is probably the most important, I feel, is driving safely. Um, because if you have to rescue a vehicle that you overturned or got stuck, that takes time. And it also takes your number one resource, which is money. And you're burning fuel, which we know costs money as well. So just drive safe. Try not to take too many risks unless you know that you can make it. And uh, yeah. Just try to drive safe and you should be okay. I've been trying to do that and it has been working out, but there have been some scary times where I almost had to reset the game. So uh, just try to follow that one pretty closely. And then the last one, only buy essential vehicles. So plan out what vehicles you know that are good in all parts of the game, even every other region. Don't buy vehicles that are not gonna be uh, resourceful in some of the later parts of the game where it gets really, really hard. So just plan those out and try to buy vehicles that you think that you are pretty comfortable with, whether they are fuel efficient or just off-road monsters. So those things I think will help you guys. Those are my principles and my final tips. Um, in the last part, before I close out the video, I want to tell you how, how much money you can make in Michigan. And this is not just a Michigan only uh, guide. This is just a little sample to show you that you can help yourself get started fast to kind of push you through the mid parts of the game and help you save money to, you know, when you have to buy fuel, you're not scrambling mission to mission to actually purchase yourself fuel. You'll have like a little bit more of a, a safety net of funds. So Michigan, you have 330,700 to 381,350. And that's the max amount of money you can make from this region with contest, tasks, and contracts. And I left Michigan with 232,000 and the only things I bought in Michigan because you know there's a discrepancy there of almost a hundred thousand that I, I've actually lost um, the only thing I bought was the Ford CLT 9000 as a fuel truck um, upgrades repairs vehicle add-ons and also what costs the most is going to be your logging trailers for medium logs and also your long logs, which cost $14,100. So that's $28,200 just there with logging as well. So anyways, guys, that is my video on what I think about hard mode. I hope this will help you out with the tips and everything like that. Hit me up if you guys need any help or need to talk about, need to go over some of these other things. So until next time, God bless and stay upright.